Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins. I run the Tech Hut YouTube channel, and today I'm gonna to go ahead and be your Linode developer advocate. And that's what we're gonna be doing is talking about a wonderful utility called Yacht. What this is gonna do is give us a wonderful web-based graphical user interface to actually go ahead and interact with our Docker instance, whether that be the templates, applications, just about everything. Now, this isn't gonna be a video focusing on Docker, like the actual use case and all that of Docker. If you're interested in learning more about Docker, uh, Linode has a couple of wonderful videos that will go over the basics of using Docker. In this, we're gonna be completely focusing on Yacht, which is a graphical user interface for it. And setting up Yacht on Linode is actually very easy. This is my Linode dashboard. First, you're gonna need a Linode account. If you don't already have one, you could go ahead and use the link down below to get a $100 60 day credit. So with that, let's go ahead and get Yacht up and running. And the beautiful thing, at least initially, it's not gonna actually be that much work. All we need to do is go over here to create Linode, head over to the marketplace. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, Yacht is right there. So give that a click. And we're gonna to want to go ahead and set everything up. So the Yacht password, this is gonna display in the console. So I'm just gonna set this as password for now. Obviously I'd make it a little bit stronger than that. And then we're gonna to want to set up our email. I'm just gonna go ahead and go with my business email for now. Uh, you could of course leave it as the default if you would like to, but I do like to set my own. Uh, Yacht Compose Support. This is actually a new feature after the sixth alpha version. So you could go ahead and enable this if you want to, to go ahead and manually make and configure your templates. Now I will note if we go over here, it says keep in mind that this is an alpha, so the risk of data loss is real, and it may not be stable. So if you are planning on using this, uh, one, it's not really recommended to use it in a production capacity, but if you do plan on using it, down here at the very bottom, we have the option for backups, so I do recommend you uh, select that if you are gonna have this as a production system. So back up here to the Yacht options, I'm gonna have the Compose support as yes, Theme default, you could change that later if you'd like to. For images, let's just go with the latest version of Debian. Now with that, we're gonna select our region. Generally, I just pick the server that is closer to me or closer to the people that are gonna be my target audience. So for that, that's gonna be California. Now for the plan, the minimum requirement is the nanode one gigabyte. But since this is a Docker container, I do plan on managing multiple things on it. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and select the four gigabyte plan. Now, if we scroll down, we could give it a label. For this, I'm gonna call it testing. And then we're gonna go ahead and select our root password, make sure that this is strong and secure. And then if we scroll down, we have those backup options like I stated earlier. So let's go ahead and create our Linode. So when your Linode finishes booting, what we could do is open the Lish console. And this is really good of just monitoring what it is currently doing. The wonderful thing about these one-click installs, it's gonna go ahead and grab all the dependencies, install Yacht for us and do everything that otherwise we'd need to do manually. So once this is all done and it gives us the option to log in, that's when we're gonna know that Yacht is ready to go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, and there it is. We can see the installation is complete and it's giving us the option to log in. What we're actually gonna do is log in through a local terminal just cause it's a little bit easier to work with that over the Lish console. So let's go ahead and fire open a terminal. And to log into this, we're just gonna go ahead and copy the SSH access right here. So go ahead and give that a copy. Let's open up our terminal, make it a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing here. And then go ahead and paste that in. Enter, it's asking if this is a secure server. Yes, we want to continue, it's our server, so we know that that is the case. And now we can go ahead and type in our password, the root password that we set up when we uh, used our one-click installer, and there we go, we are now logged in. And what we're actually gonna do here is head over to the Linode document website, where they actually have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do everything we're doing now, so this is gonna be linked down below. And the main reason why I want to use this is because we're gonna be copying and pasting some commands. We're gonna be following the additional steps for the SSL certificate. Now, having an SSL certificate uh, connected to Yacht will just make everything function a lot better that I've noticed, at least in my short time playing around with it. So what we're gonna do is copy some of these commands over. So let's shrink this down a bit. Let's move our terminal over here. And I'm just gonna be kind of talking about what we're doing as we are working through this. So first we're gonna to want to SSH into it. We've already done that. 
And now what we're going to want to do is create some local working directories. This is where we're going to be creating our SSL certificates and editing our engine X configuration before we go ahead and send it over to Docker. So we're going to want to generate the self signed certificate. And to do that, we're just going to input this right here. And if it was successful, it is going to look like this. So right here, I'm just typing us because that is my current country for the state. I'm going to type in Washington, hit enter for the city. I'm currently in Cheney. Now for the company, you go ahead and input this if you'd like to, but for now I'm going to just skip over it. The organizational unit, skip it. For this one, we're gonna to want to input yacht, hit enter. And then for the email address, we're gonna go ahead and just input the email address that's associated with our instance of yacht, hit enter. And now that was generated. So if I do LS, we can see we have the yacht key. And what we're gonna to want to do is actually move that over to the local SSL folder. So just go ahead and paste this in. And now what we're going to want to do is move the Nginx configuration file out of Docker so we could go ahead and edit it. So we're going to paste in this command, hit enter. And now we could go ahead and edit the Nginx config. It's going to be located right here. And you could use whatever text editor you want to manipulate this. I'm just going to use nano. So head over there. And here we are. Now under HTTP under server, we can see that it's listing for the 8,000 port. That's actually the port that we're gonna be using to go ahead and connect to the GUI of Yacht. But under there, we're gonna to want to go ahead and import the links to our SSL certificate. So we could go ahead and just give these a copy. I'm gonna go enter and then paste this in, Control Shift V. Then I'm gonna edit the spacing just so it's proper. So we're gonna level this out here, level this out and then control O for output, enter control X to get out of there. So now we've edited that Nginx configuration file. Now what we're gonna to want to do is copy the local working directory stuff over to the proper locations, which is gonna be in the ETC directories. So the first thing we're gonna do is move over our new Nginx config. So just copy and paste that over into our terminal. And now we're gonna move over our SSL certificates. So go ahead and paste that. It's the docker cp command. And now what we're going to want to do is remove the characters here. So copy this command, give that a paste. And then last but not least, we're going to want to go ahead and reload engine X. So give that a copy and paste that over. Now, easy as that, our instance of Yacht will now have a SSL certificate associated with Docker. So with that, I could go ahead and close out our terminal because we won't really be needing to work in this anymore. I'm going to drag this out a bit. And now what we're going to do is actually connect to our instance of Yacht. And to do that, we're just going to grab this IP address, open up a new tab, paste that over, and we're going to want to travel to the port 8000. Hit enter, and here is Yacht. So we're going to go ahead and type in our email address, and then type in that password, which for me currently is just password. There we go. And now this is our Yacht dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see everything. The first thing you're going to notice on your dashboard is all your instances that are currently running all your Docker containers. And here, the only thing running is Yacht itself. But what we're going to do real quick is go ahead and head over to templates. From here, we're going to go ahead and be able to add a lot of different things to Yacht. So under templates, let's go ahead and hit plus. We're actually going to just follow their suggestion. Let's go ahead and add their self-hosted pro templates. So I'm going to give this a copy under the title. I'm just going to call this self-hosted and then paste in that URL. And what this is going to do is give us a lot of different applications that we could go ahead and add to this. So if I open up self-hosted, here we are. This is all the things that we can easily one click deploy. Well, one click deploy. It's really easy to deploy these things. And a good example, just showing you how easy it is. Let's go ahead and deploy. Libre speed. This is a uh, free and open source speed test for HTML5. Being that this is going to be hosted on Linode, it's going to allow me to test my internet speed with my very own Linode instance. So to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and hit deploy. So I can change my name. This is the link to the image. So if you wanted to change it to beta or whatever they offer, you could go ahead and edit this here. We have some advanced settings that I'm not really going to dive too far into, but if we go ahead and continue, here is where we can set up our network. Now under network, what we're going to want to do is change this to bridge. And right here we have our label. This is just web UI. We have our host and you can see it's 80 by default. I'm actually going to change this over to port 200 and we have our container, our protocol. I'm going to go to continue uh, host and container looks good. So continue and let's go ahead and deploy this. So now if I head over to the dashboard here, 
we will have Libre Speed and Yacht. And right here, you go to manage your or view your CPU usage, RAM utilization, and all that fun stuff. So if I head back to applications here, you can see we have links to the web UI. So if I just go ahead and click on that, it's going to open it up in a new tab. That's my Linode IP address with the port that I just picked. And then I could go ahead and just run a quick speed test. So let's see how this is doing actually. So it looks like hosting a uh, Linode speed test is giving me pretty cool. Whoa, it's actually giving me really good upload speed. So that's cool. And there we go. So we just tested our internet speed using our very own self-hosted instance of Docker on the node using the Yacht Web Portal. Super cool stuff. Now actually in this dashboard for Libre Speed, we have our name, we have our image, our ID, the current status, all the information on our environments, the information on the storage and where everything is located. And then right here we have some controls so we can download support bundles, we can edit it, and we can refresh it. Here we can start, stop, restart, completely kill it, or delete this container completely. If I go over here under processes, you can see everything that it's actually doing. If I go into here under logs, we can see all the different logs and actually get a containerized specific terminal for what's going on on this container. And then over here we have the status, which will give us a better uh, historical graph of the CPU usage and RAM consumption. So with that, we could go ahead and check out some more of these. We have templates here, so you, we can add other templates under projects. This is where we can go ahead and use uh, make your own Docker Compose project. So if I open this up and go to edit, this is where we can actually edit and make our own projects. And then if I go over here under resources here, you can add additional images through here. And then we have volumes, networks, so you can see what's the default network, which is bridge at the moment. And then of course we have a good variety of settings. Here you can import and export your actual yacht settings. If we go over to theme, this is where you can actually change all your colors and everything like that. I could disable the dark theme, re-enable it, change those colors. Here we have foreground and tabs. And then if I go up here to the template variables, you can actually configure all of these if you'd like to. And it's really easy to do. So the variable logs, for example, is gonna be in the directory yacht, app data, and logs. So if you want to completely change this and set all this stuff to other locations, you could do that. Under prune, we could prune images, networks, volumes, and containers, which will delete unused, whatever you choose to. And then of course we have updates and right now we are on the latest version, which is super nice. So with that, I will note one more time that this is alpha software. It's mostly meant for testing and playing around with. So that and anything else we mentioned in this video is going to be linked down below. Uh, with all that, like we said earlier, if you want to try this out, you can go ahead and use the link in the description to get your $100 60 day credit. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel. There is a lot of cool stuff to come and you definitely do not want to miss it. So with all that, I hope you have an absolutely magnificent day and goodbye.